If you guys have been looking for a fantastic, budget-oriented, bang-for-buck TV, then stay tuned because you're going to want to learn all about this TV here. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? It's Quizzy Dog here and like I mentioned before, today we're going to be taking a look at the Hisense Q8G or also known in the US market, the H8G. So this is a little brother to the H9G, of course that is their flagship model. So don't be surprised if you're not absolutely wowed by some of the specifications we talk about with this panel because at the end of the day, it is made to be a more affordable version of their flagship TV. So behind me, of course, we do have the 55 inch. It does come in 65 as well, but given the 55 is what I've had the opportunity to test, this is what we're gonna be talking about most often. So behind me, of course, you can see the panel itself. It is plenty bright. Exposure was a little tricky to actually obtain in this video, but this 55 inch TV is actually powered by 72 backlit zones with a full array local dimming. Now 72 seems a little underwhelming compared to 132 when we look at the 55 inch version of the H9F or H9G, but at the end of the day, a lot of TVs in this pricing category either have a lot less when it comes to their full array local dimming, or they may just be edge lit. So to me, 72 is an absolute plus. And with those backlit zones, we do see it achieve fantastic brightness. So right now I do have the brightness at 100% on high for the full array local dimming, and this should be measuring very close to 700 nits. Now, the reason why that's important to talk about is your nits are really what's going to give you your high levels of contrast, your separations between your blacks and your whites. It's really what's gonna pop your HDR colors. And a lot of TVs in this current pricing category well be labeled as HDR. I've actually even seen some labeled as Dolby Vision supported, but when you take a look at their NITS measurement, some of them are hitting two, three, maybe if they're lucky, 400 NITS. And with a NITS rating lower than about 600, you're really not getting a tangible return when it comes to your HDR content. So for this guy here to actually measure at very close to 700 nits, depending on what you're watching, this is where you're gonna get what I think the start to HDR, and that is something that I really like that they concentrated on this year. Now, other than the brightness, of course, this guy is a 4K panel, so it does have the ability to show you your Ultra HD content. It is HDR10 Plus certified, as well as Dolby Vision, and all of those settings are keyed into their unique inputs depending on exactly what you're watching. So if you have your color set up and tuned correctly for HDR, and you happen to flip over to some Dolby Vision content, then the Dolby Vision settings are just going to kick in, meaning that once this is calibrated to your liking, it's going to do all that lag work for you. All you have to do is decide exactly what you wanna watch, and this will try to give you the best experience possible. Now, managing all of that content, both viewable and settings, would be Android TV. So yes, this is fully Android TV capable, and it gives you all of the suites that you would come to love with that platform, whether it be up to 1,500 different shows or applications that you can watch through a plethora of different applications or subscription-based services, you're also going to get the ability to do some light gaming, some searches, Chromecast is built in, we have Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa support, so this TV really needs nothing. And as we continue to talk about this TV, the one thing that I like about it is you can throw this up in a living room or a bedroom and really not have to worry about what you're plugging into it. You don't need a secondary set-top box, you don't need a gaming console, you don't need an Apple TV to get your viewable movies and music and TV shows because it's all built into the Android operating system. So it really does allow for a one-stop shop when it comes to all the content you're looking to view. 
Now, I want to take a quick second as well to talk about the overall aesthetics and build quality of this TV because most of the time when we talk about a budget panel, usually there's some flaws in either the way that it looks or the way that it's built. And this is a panel that I think for the first time is hitting one of those budget oriented sectors as far as price is concerned, but still giving you a great return in its overall look, let alone its actual picture quality. So because this has full array local dimming, as well as a quantum dot panel, we can see that the bezels are actually very, very small around the edges of this TV. In fact, they're so small that they have almost a, a floating edgeless piece of glass right on the front. And this allows a lot of fantastic reflection control. So you can see I actually have a bounce card beside me. And yes, it's showing up a little bit on the display, but for a room that has almost all the lights turned off, I have a light blasting over here and bouncing off here. The reflection on the TV is actually very limited, which is fantastic to see. So if you're in a living room environment with open windows or in a basement like myself with pot lights in some of the rooms, between the glass front that they use on this and again talking about that peak brightness, this should actually mitigate a lot of the reflections and allow you to view this TV very, very well. If you don't have this wall mounted, of course it does have a set of legs on the bottom. And the nice thing I like about this lag system that they did this year on the uh, Q8G is they actually allow you to either mount them more on the outside of the TV for stability or actually a little bit closer to the center. So if you have a very small TV stand, you can actually change that footprint to be a little bit more narrow. So you can set this on almost any piece of furniture that you have existing. Other than that, on the back of the panel, the legs do allow for some wire uh, routing options as well, just to keep everything flush and kind of nice and managed. And then for connectivity on the back, we do have four HDMI ports. All of these ports do of course support 4K60, they are HDMI uh, 2.0B and they offer HDCP 2.2 copyright protection. As we discussed in my other video, which is linked of course in the iCards above, just like the H9G, the H8G does not offer HDMI 2.1. So no uh, VRR support, no eARC, but there's a couple of reasons for that. The main reason is of course, the more budget oriented nature of this panel. But secondly, this panel is just a 60 Hertz panel. So the need to push beyond the 4K60 threshold is just simply not there. So having all of the services working through HDMI 2.0B means that you can still get uh, Chroma 444 pull down if you're using this as a computer monitor in 4K60, um, as well as doing everything else that HDR needs within those limits. It would have been pointless to put HDMI 2.1 on this panel here. And we talk about this further in some of my other content surrounding the, uh, the more premium version of this TV. So the HDMI ports, like I said, 2.0 uh, B, there are four of them. One of them does support ARC, so audio return channel. So if you do have an amplifier or a soundbar or surround sound system that offers ARC support as well, just tie that right into HDMI 1 and you can actually use 2, 3, and 4, plug it in and it will actually still give you that full uncompressed surround sound experience. There is some legacy support on this as well uh, in the form of composite, optical for your audio, and just a couple of other things on there as well. But again, for me, as, as much as I like all of the inputs that are on this, the main purpose of this TV for me would of course be all of the smart features and what Android TV has to offer. Now, I wanna take a second to grab the remote, which is this guy right here. So if we'll focus, I know the lighting's not that optimum, but the remote is pretty much the exact same from last year as it is continuing on the uh, H9F and H9G, but this should do everything you need it to do. There's some hot buttons and some different things, but we're gonna go right back to kind of the main Android OS here. And one thing that I want you guys to notice is exactly how fast 
this OS is. This is something that really plagued last year's model in the 7 series, the 8 series, and honestly, even with the H9F that I have in my living room, I found that the operating system wasn't quite as smooth or snappy even after I went in and changed all of the animation speeds down to zero. So this is both replicated on this panel as well as my H9G for 2020. And the Android OS is plenty fast and I absolutely love it. Now, going back into Netflix here for a second, we're just gonna resume that content we were looking at. The main reason why I've had this playing in the background is even though this is a budget-oriented panel, it's Accuracy is actually fantastic. So uh, when we talk about uh, gray uniformity and black uniformity, even though we have fewer backlit zones, we're still seeing fantastic results when it comes to uh, how this portrays its colors, its black levels, mitigates its DSE. It is there, of course, if you're looking at a grayscale, you will see some light shifts. Um, I have no software to test this myself, but taking a look at some of the ratings online so far, it scored very well at its pricing category. Aside from watching content, and maybe we'll actually put some other content on in the background here now as well, once this is calibrated, I actually went through and I already optimized my white point balance and changed some of the settings to give me what I felt was probably one of the, the cleanest pictures that I could get. Uh, let's go home and let's go into 13 reasons why. The only reason why I continuously go back and test this, I actually haven't even watched this season, is I find it's a great representation of skin tones. Um, so we're gonna have some B-roll of some content coming up shortly because my reflector's kind of getting onto the screen, but the way that this TV handles motion control, handles skin tones, handles colors, is absolutely fantastic. So if you're consuming media, and again, looking to do it on a budget, because I know a lot of you are going to say that there's better TVs, and there certainly are, but we need to focus on the return on investment for what you're actually putting in cost-wise to this TV. I think this is honestly probably one of the best ones in its pricing category. Now, aside from movies and TV, this is also a fantastic con uh, console TV or PC TV if you're using it as a monitor. So input lag when you have this in game mode is actually measured at the high 10 milliseconds. And when we take a look at last year's kind of flagship and best-selling TV that Hisense had, the H9F, that was pulling in what was low numbers in the mid 16 millisecond range. So to have even a budget version a year later pulling in high 10 millisecond, maybe low 11 millisecond in game mode is absolutely fantastic. So for moving a cursor around the screen or playing games, whether it's on PC or on console, that's going to look fantastic. Now, for next-gen consoles, yes, again, this is only a 60 hertz panel. It does offer um, motion interpolation up to uh, motion rate 240. You're not really gonna wanna use that in games, and honestly, for the most part, I have that turned off. There's a little bit of ghosting and retention because of the way that the 60 hertz panel sees that and tries to duplicate that to offer a little bit of smoothing. Um, stuff's not filmed that way. It's Content is, is made to be viewed typically with that off. Um, but when it comes to gaming on this guy on the next gen, I know a lot of people are concerned with TVs coming out this year or TVs that will be out by the end of the year and whether or not they will support HDMI 2.1, variable refresh rates, and a lot of other things that people think they need when it comes to next gen gaming. Yes, when we look at the specs of the PS5 as well as the new Xbox, they will be capable of resolutions up to 4K 120 hertz. But if you deep dive into a lot of the content that's actually set to come out in the near future, you'll notice that a lot of it is still 4K 30 or 4K 60, which this panel will do very well. And by very well, I mean it will look fantastic. And again, with that input lag, we're seeing such low numbers there that this should give you, honestly, one of the better or best experience when it comes to input latency, which I think is fantastic. So 
that's really just covering some of the basics of this TV. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the content. We're gonna cycle through maybe some games, maybe some videos, and then we're gonna talk about some overall closing thoughts on this TV. And then I really wanna interact with you guys in the comments and see what you think. But again, let's take a look at a little bit of a content test. All right, guys, so now that you've actually got to see the TV in action, as opposed to just behind me, let me know your closing thoughts. For me personally, I think this is going to check a lot of boxes for a lot of people that may not need to invest $1,000 plus into a TV. If it's just for occasional viewing or you're on a budget, really consider the Hisense Q8G or again, known in the states as the h8g because for everything that it does it does very well and for everything that it doesn't do it doesn't do it for a reason it doesn't offer a native 120 hertz display it doesn't offer hdmi 2.1 or eARC or a couple of things that i've seen a couple of reviewers talk about and and kind of bring the scores down because it's missing but at the end of the day, if those things were there, then this TV wouldn't be priced at where it is. And it wouldn't be in that placement in the market for what you might be considering because of that. So there's a lot of reasons why it's made like this. And again, for me personally, I think this is probably one of the best TVs within its category. At the end of the day, it's 4K. It offers fantastic color replication. Everything else is pretty good as far as, like I said, the DSE, the uniformity, thanks to the 72 backlit zones for the full array local dimming. The OS is gonna give you everything you need. Gaming performance is fantastic. And again, for a gaming panel, whether it be for PC using this in 4K Chroma 444, or using this on console up to 4K 60, that input lag is crazy, crazy low. And I'm super, super impressed by that. If you've watched my other content on the H9G or the Q9G, you'll know I've actually been using that as my preferred PC monitor for content creation because of how well the colors are replicated once you have the panel calibrated, as well as exactly how fast the input latency is. And I think this is very, very similar and priced appropriately for the feature set that it has and it feels to me like the feature set was designed specifically for that reason. So let me know in the comments below exactly how you guys feel about this panel, whether or not you think there's something that's missing that's an absolute game changer, uh, whether or not you think that it would be great for you, and maybe if you were looking to pick this up, exactly what your use case would be. Uh, purchase links are again in the video description if you guys want to check the up-to-date pricing and availability in your area. And I will try to put links for both the Canadian version as well as the US version, providing the US version is sold on major retailer sites. But until my next video, guys, my name is Crazy Dog. You guys have been awesome, and we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.